There you go, there's the word. It's consentennial. <laughs> Do you want somebody else to try? Yeah, it says consentennial. Says quintennial. Says hard word to say. It's Evan Sesquicentennial anniversary and that means that Evans is 150 years old. My name is Margaret Todd and I'm one of the first people to ever live in the city of Evans 150 years ago. I look pretty good for my age, don't I? Me and my husband Andrew got here in 1869 along with a few others. Things were a lot different back then. We didn't have cell phones like you do now. When I saw a pretty sunset along the South Platte, I couldn't take a picture and share it on Instaface or Twittergram or Snapbook or, well, whatever you kids are calling it now. I'm gonna show you how Evans progressed throughout the years, but first, let me show you how it was built. It was the year 1869. Evans was founded as the first town in Weld County. Me and Andrew, my bearded husband, were ministers at Evans Presbyterian Church. In 1874, we built the first school for kids of all ages. We would have kindergarten, high school students, all ages taught in the same building and sometimes even in the same classroom. Compare that to your schools today. Evans has six public schools and students always learn with other children their age. We also started the first newspaper called the Evans Express, which is still published today at the city complex and on the city's website. Oh, oh boy, websites. <laughs> we definitely didn't have those. We used a printing press and our newspaper only ran on Saturdays. Fur trapper named Elbridge Jerry was here with us too. In fact, here he is. I had a ranch and trading post in Evans. There was another married couple too, Holland and Matilda Godfrey. You'll meet them later. They were farmers along the South Platte River. And that's how it all got started. Coming up, there were no cars, but Mustangs still roared through the city streets. Plus, Denver to Cheyenne and Evans in between. Find out how the railroad put Evans on the map. Do you hear that sound? That's not just the sound of a train. That's the most important sound in the 150 year history of Evans. Because without that sound, this town would not even be here. The Denver Pacific Railroad was built to link Denver to Cheyenne in the late 1860s. During construction, they stopped here in the winter of 1869, and that's when Evans was born. The train is so crucial to Evans' history, the town is named after the man who brought it here, John Evans, who was the builder of the Denver Pacific Railroad and the governor of Colorado. Of course, the train wasn't the only method of transportation in the early days. This is my friend Matilda Godfrey. You'll remember the fur trapper Eldridge Jerry talked about her earlier. There was another married couple too, Holland and Matilda Godfrey. She and her husband were farmers during their early days of Evans. Matilda, how did you get around in those days? Well, it was also windy in those days too. <laughs> we didn't have any automobiles for transportation. We got around by horsepower. Almost every family had a horse, or a donkey for transportation. Owning livestock wasn't just valuable for transportation, it was also crucial for farming because we could pull plows and carts into town with our produce. So livestock was a lot like automobiles back then, except instead of using gas, they ate grass. Coming up, we learned how they got to work, but what did they do for work? Plus, classes in session. Find out what it was like to go to school with somebody that was 12 years older than you. And later on, Evans is a culturally rich community. Find out how our city's diversity became our strength. Welcome to school. Wait, you mean it looks like a church? That's no mistake. Kindergarten all the way through high school all fit into one building that was shared with the church. That's a lot different than your school today. Evans has six schools with hundreds of students in each one. There were many differences between school then and now, but the basics of history, math, and literature were still taught with a little Latin thrown into boot. 
Many things have changed in Evans since 1869, but 150 years ago, people got up every day and went to work the same as you and I would. Farming was the primary method of labor. Farmers grew potatoes and sugar beets, while ranchers raised cattle and horses. Farmers and ranchers lived close to rivers or dug irrigation ditches because just like today, water was vital to survival. In town, people owned shops to make a living. They would sell anything the people couldn't make for themselves. Things like furniture, canned food, animal feed, and coal. There were also tradesmen. They developed a skill studying with someone who is experienced in either making something like wood furniture, or iron horseshoes, or even in cutting hair. Coming up, there was no electricity and no cell phones. What the heck did people do in 1869? And still to come, diversity has made Evans a land of hope and opportunity. Stick around. We honor the people and the cultures that have created this beautiful city. So imagine, it's November. It's cold, you have no electricity to turn on lights or to heat your house. You just got home from school and now the real work begins. You have to cut wood and bring it back to the house. I need to go to the bathroom. Then you have to go outside. But it's cold. Still gotta go outside. I'm thirsty. Oh, go on down to the river and get you some water. But it's cold. People got water from rivers, ditches, or wells and brought it indoors by bucket to use. I want some milk. Go get the cow and squeeze on their udders. But what about the grocery store? There is no grocery store. Go get those cows and start squeezing. I want to play video games. We don't have those, but uh, we can see. I don't want to see. How about playing sports? On my PlayStation? No, I mean real sports. We could go to town and go to the stores. We could go to church, uh, public halls. Or go to the saloon. Oh, nice try. Next, hang on as we go back to the future and explore what Evans is like in 2019. You'll meet one of our city council members and learn about the cultural heritage that makes Evans a land of opportunity and diversity. I'm Alicia Johnson and I am a city council member for the city of Evans. Evans is a lot different than it was in Margaret's day. Today, Evans is a melting pot with a population of nearly 25,000 people. 52% of the population is Caucasian and 48% Hispanic, with many cultures represented from across the globe. The first Hispanic settlers arrived in 1924. They were called the Spanish Colony. Around 45 Hispanic families migrated from the southwestern part of the United States to northern Colorado. They worked hard in the day and blew off steam by playing baseball at night. Eventually, the colony formed a baseball league with several teams. The best players from the league joined forces to create a super team called the Girly Grays. And many of those players went on to become professional baseball players. Also, the nearby town of Deerfield helped introduce the African Americans to the area. Deerfield is a ghost town today. Founded in 1910 by seven African American families, 10 years later, the town grew to 700 people and expanded to 15,000 acres. Eventually, a severe drought was too difficult to overcome, but the original founders' dream of freedom had become a reality and an inspiration. Today, the cultural influence can be felt throughout Evans. Soccer Without Borders is based in Evans. It is an organization that uses soccer as a tool to help migrants adapt to life in the United States. The Immigrant and Refugee Center is also located in Evans. They help immigrants learn English and advocate for women around the globe. Many languages are spoken in the city of Evans, such as Spanish. Muchos lenguajes se hablan en la ciudad de Evans, por ejemplo, español. And the food reflects the vast diversity within the city, from Thai food to Japanese, Mexican, and American. Industry. Small business and large corporations make up the city's workforce. Evans is also home to 13 parks that help beautify the city and make it a great place to live. The city has a rich history and a bright future, and we're all proud to call it home.